everyone and welcome to another episode of Chrysalis on the Couch and uh, my name is Joanna I'm really pleased to be joined today by Gemma, Jose and Esther and today we're going to be talking about the impact of the pandemic on children and young people and we've got um, hopefully some interesting personal stories to share and lots of stuff to chat about so we're going to discuss you know what has happened to the mental health of our children during the pandemic um, what was it like being at home with them? Maybe a bit more than we normally would. Uh, what was it like having a baby during this time uh, and, and being off work? So between us, lots of experiences and, and loads to chat about. So I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please like and subscribe to the Chrysalis channel so that you can see um, future Chrysalis on the Couch episodes. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to ask each of the guys to introduce themselves. Uh, so as I say, my name's Joanna, I'm a tutor for Chrysalis, I teach year one, uh, formerly in Reading, but currently on Zoom, but hopefully back to Reading soon. Um, and if I can come to um, Jose, please. Hello to you, my name is uh, Jose, and um, yes, uh, it's going to be year one, I'm finishing my course now. I'm, uh, as you can say, like a house husband, I'm taking care of my little ones. I have a five-year-old girl and an 11-year-old girl. And I've been trying to do my best with them. So my wife is all the time, you know, doing meetings and things like that. So I'm in charge of the whole thing, the whole house, the cat, the dog, everything. So <laughs> this is what I'm doing at the moment. It's a lot. It's a lot to cope with, isn't it? And well, as well as going through your, your crystalist studies. So well done, Jose. It'll be good to hear more about how the last year has been for you. Um, Gemma, next, please. Hi, I'm Gemma. I am student team leader based at the Chrysalis head office in Somerset. Um, and I've got two daughters. Brilliant. Thanks, Gemma. And Esther? Hi there. I'm Esther. I'm year one hypnotherapy a student. Um, I have two children, uh, 11 and 15. Perfect. Thank you. So we're all experts in children and parenting and, <laughs> and all that. Well, are we experts or are we just doing our best? Um, I have one son and he's 11. We have lots of 11 year old uh, parents of 11 year olds here, strangely. Uh, so my son's last year of primary school, just now. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get into some chat then about what it's been like for us. Um, and I think I am going to start with Gemma, if that's all right. Would you mind just saying a bit about, because you guys haven't all met before, so tell us all a bit about what the last sort of year and a bit has been like for you. Okay, um, so I actually um, went on maternity leave about four weeks into lockdown um, and I had a baby during lockdown um, in May uh, of last year. Um, so I had all um, the anxiety attached to what, what was going to be allowed. Was my, my husband allowed to come in with me when I had, had the baby? Um, the whole childcare issue, because I've got an eight-year-old, you know, how would I sort that out? Because, you know, we weren't allowed to mix um, and I couldn't have anyone in to look after her. So, yeah, it's, it's, and then obviously I've had a year's maternity pretty much all in lockdown um so being at home uh with my baby which has been great um because we've been able to bond and have that special time together but we haven't had the social side of things um I managed to get to about two baby groups before the November lockdown um so yeah she's she's missed out I feel um on on socializing as a baby um, but now I'm back to work. She's she's mixing uh, and started nursery, and she absolutely loves it. She's settled in really well. Um, my daughter obviously is back at school, which is great yeah. um, because obviously being on maternity leave with a newborn and homeschooling um, had its um, moments. <laughs> yeah. In the least, <laughs> I can't even imagine. That just must have been absolutely yeah. I mean, overwhelming at times. I'm guessing. Yeah. 
completely. <laughs> thing, Gemma. Like, oh, wow, wow, I have so many things I want to ask you about <laughs> that whole thing. But having, I guess, having had, you know, been through a childbirth and having a, a baby before and this being your second time around, like, how different was it in that whole experience? As in, um, actually going to the hospital. I'm curious about that part, yeah, first of all. I mean, to be honest, um, it was very, very relaxed in a way that, apart from obviously the midwives and everything um, being fully PPE'd up and masked and everything, um, I wasn't treated any different. Um, I didn't actually go to hospital until I was in established labour. So um, my husband was able to be with me the whole time. Um, And yeah, to be honest, I wouldn't, you wouldn't have known. You wouldn't have known, Got you know, it was absolutely fine. I'm yeah. so glad your husband was able to be with you because I remember like reading about all that at the time and thinking oh that would be really difficult to feel that you had to go through that on your own so yeah obviously the run-up to having the baby and appointments and that type of thing mm-hmm. you know I had to go on my own um you know luckily everything was fine but you know I, I feel for all those uh ladies that were pregnant and had to go to appointments by themselves and things weren't going so well it must have been absolutely terrible yeah dreadful such yeah. a unique situation really isn't it and just one of the many things where people yeah, it's changed lives hasn't it in terms of those like those things that have been missed and and, and not been able people not being able to do as normal um which we just couldn't have nobody could have foreseen but yeah amazing that you've sort of come through that and now you've got some sort of normal back and you're yeah. back at the office and stuff it's been quite a relief to get back to the office it is nice it's <laughs> nice um to have some structure and routine because of being at home it was just me and the girls and you know we weren't going or doing anything so it's nice now to get up and you know take them to school and nursery and then go into the office and then come home at night you know back to back to normal to a certain extent yeah, absolutely no definitely oh good to hear and um Jose, for you, in terms of routine and stuff, did your routine change much through lockdown with, with your kids? Because I know that you've you've been at home with your kids pretty much. Yeah, but everything um, changed. The whole dynamic changed in, in my house. It's like uh, my wife used to travel a lot for business reasons. And she goes to Japan. She goes to, I don't know, for 10 days, 15 days, things like that. And suddenly now it's a year and, and a half here downstairs. So everyone <laughs> has to be quiet. So every time that they come, it's like, mom is in a meeting. So oh, every time that we arrive with the car, we can see her, you know, in the window. Yeah. And like, mom is in a meeting. Please don't just be quiet. Don't do any noise. Don't do. So we are like Indians going in. Just <laughs> oh, God. So, and also, again, all odds, my, uh, my oldest one, the 11 year old, is like, a, it's not focused at the school. It wasn't focused before the, before the pandemic. And then the pandemic came mm-hmm. and she was really, really focused. I don't know why. And she took charge of her homework and everything. And she was like, a, she had the best grades ever, ever. Yeah. She was taking responsibility. Even we called the teacher and I said, excuse me, are we missing something? She's telling me that she's doing everything, all, all, you know, all duties and everything in the list and everything. It was amazing. So in a way we have a positive outcome from the, from the pandemic. But on the other side, my little one, She's more sociable. She's always, uh, you know, playing, uh, playing, doing things. She was like uh, coming down in a way because she now socializing a lot with the other girls who she used to be. So we have those two things, you know, we put in the balance. So it's like uh, one is coming up and the other one that looks like it was okay, it was coming down. So it was kind of, of like that. And also the routines. We try to make every day different just for the girls. Yeah. We want our vacuum, a trampoline, you know, a tennis racket. So Every day we were doing that, lunch, we're cooking together. We just try to do, I don't know, muffins, things like that. You know, like uh, I never did that before with them. But now we are cooking, that is cooking. So like everyone is cooking with me. Oh. We make a mess. But anyway, we just try to do something different every day. Yeah. That's, that's what it was for us. Yeah, to break the monotony because you're in the same place every day. So just exactly. try and bring it. Exactly. And also we bought a dog. That was the craziest thing ever. My wife finished like, I want a dog. I say, Patricia, the dog is going to come to me. You know what I mean? At the end yeah, of the day, I'm the woman is going to take the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Another responsibility. So we ended up with a French bulldog. So it was the highlight. So, you know, we tried to, and the girls were like happy, you know, like, daddy, a dog, the dog. You know, they were almost crying because of the dog. So 
it was really good and it was a really good experience. Now the dog is like, you know, you can have, her name is Mini. You see that I like all these, oh, uh, these Mini, yeah. things. Mini <laughs> so you know, probably in 10 seconds, you have something like, Mini, please. This is my third pair of glasses right now. So because she's sitting in the glasses. I'm thinking, <laughs> So brings a lot of joy, you know, but this also brings like, oh my gosh, what have I been doing, what I was thinking? But that's more or less the, the routines and the things, and, you know. Amazing. But do the girls look after Minnie now? Have they stepped up? Uh, they've sort of fallen away and lost interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. Of course it is. Always the way, is it? And they promise, don't they? Yes, I'll feed them, I'll take them out. The worst thing is I'm thinking about having another one because I feel bad because she's on her own. So I'm thinking about having another friend. Oh. With stuff. So... <laughs> Then my wife, I think, she'll stop me, you know, like... <laughs> yeah, you're in real trouble now, Jose, if you do that, that's going to be too much. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's really interesting what you say about your girls are obviously different personalities, different ages and stages of, like, development, and responded quite differently to that Definitely. experience was, of, of homeschooling. And I think it, it's done that, hasn't it, in a lot of families, that would be their experience. Um, yeah, now when we tell them, like, we are going, it was like a month ago, we went to Cornwall, it's like, we are going to... They were like, we are going, to, you know, because we said to say no, you know, it's like, we cannot go to this, we cannot do this, we cannot, and suddenly we start to say yes, and you can see the faces, like now, they are really, really appreciate everything you do, you know what I mean? Even go to McDonald's, you can go to, we're going to McDonald's, it's like the highlight, or you know, you know what I mean? Massive Before training. it was something like you do on a regular basis, now, uh, go to McDonald's, go to the beach, go to the, it's like, they give you even a hug, and you can see the eyes, like, thank you, daddy, and it's like, wow, it's, so it was like, it's like a kind of touching us at some point too, you know? Yeah, it's a really interesting point. I wonder if that will continue that with us as well, for, adult, for us as adults as well, that kind of newfound appreciation of the things that we maybe took for granted before. And now we could go, wow, it's fantastic to be able to go to a restaurant or, or travel a bit or, yeah. So maybe yeah, our kids will yeah. learn something from that as well, I wonder. Mm. Mm. I know um, when we were chatting just before we started recording, Esther, you, you mentioned that your children, you felt a bit like Jose's, they kind of responded to home learning differently. Would that be? Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and like Jose, it's been great for bonding and spending that extra time, but they totally responded differently. My, my youngest in particular, so I, I'm assuming the same age as your 11 year old in that they're going to both be 12 in August, was in the last year of primary. And he'd always very much been a home buddy. So every year at primary, it sort of almost seemed like he was getting used to it and he loved it and he bonded with the teacher, great with the classmates, had a great time. Then he'd be changing and he hated that change. So come lockdown, um, it was very, very strange for him. He loved being at home on the one hand, but of course he lost that whole last year of primary. So that transition between primary and secondary didn't happen. And you know, as, as we all know from our own experience, transitioning from primary to secondary is a massive, it's just such a massive scale. So that's been, that's been a huge impact on him mentally. Um, he's actually ended up, it caused him a lot of anxiety and it came out in a lot of physical symptoms like being able to throw up. And, you know, I say being able to, because sometimes I, I, I thought he was causing it himself you know the, the the throwing up and so he ended up um, we ended up getting him therapy talking therapy and um he had six sessions of that over six weeks and and that's been absolutely wonderful being able to to go to somebody independent away from the family because although in a way my children are chalk and cheese like my older one my 15 year old rolls with the punches things just go over his head he doesn't it doesn't worry him at all what's happening um he just sort of seems to adapt the younger one just get he's quite highly strung unfortunately i think it's a little bit similar to myself um and instead of being tolerant with it which is what i would have hoped i would be as a parent i've actually not been as tolerant with it as i would have hoped i've been a bit like come on just get on with it you know you do just have it which is to completely the wrong way of, of dealing with it i realize even though i'm doing it even as I'm doing it, I'm thinking, yeah. it's not working. This, this sort of, and his father is a lot more laid back, like the older one, and is able to be a bit more detached from it and say, no, you know, just give him time. That, he, that the fact that he's happy a little bit at school is the most important thing. But there's a part of me because I was growing up. You have to go. You don't have a choice. You have to go. Yeah. Um, 
anyway, so as I say, he's had therapy and um, he, I think he's coming out the other end. I really do. Like the last couple of weeks, the last two weeks, he's been at school every day, um, which I, I know that doesn't sound like a feat, but it, it really has. That's become a feat. Um, and uh, of course, now we're nearly into the summer holidays, which then you start to then think, oh, God, great. He's just got used to being in year seven. Yeah, and now it stops. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and now it's going to stop. So, um, yeah, so that's where, but but the bonding side of it was absolutely wonderful and the cooking together as well. I've, I've always done that with them anyway, but it was it was lovely because they'd started to get to that age where they wouldn't do it any longer as much with me. And I couldn't force them to go on walks with me and, and no. <laughs> do things with me, but they had to because they didn't have their friends around. So they had to, you know, so um, that was lovely, even if it was, forced government forced sanctions <laughs> yeah. um, but so so that that that's all good yes yeah amazing oh gosh I hope your son does you know continue to cope because they're not mm. easy and, and don't be hard on yourself because I think well, you were under loads of pressure as well like we were all under such pressure weren't we as parents yeah. and not knowing what's going on and of course we kind of revert don't we to those those patterns um which maybe aren't as the ideal you know we sort of like say as, as we're doing it we know oh I shouldn't be getting impatient and but you under all that pressure yourself it's really difficult isn't it to... completely completely and and well that's parenting in itself isn't it you you're, you're doing it and you know it's wrong but you're still doing it and, and you know and you're thinking press me raising my voice doesn't work with this personality or you know but I'm still but yet I'm doing it you know yeah. and that that's that's hard um he's just he's just completely different to his older brother and when you have to you sort of assume that obviously you go with the one that's easiest and causes you and you think well you I've never said it thank god and touch wood and I I never would but you almost just think can you not just be like yeah you know yeah yeah, yeah. Of course you do because that's what you know as well isn't it when it's the older one as yeah. a friend at the weekend about her two boys and she was saying well I just never it never occurred to me that my second child wouldn't would be so different to this yes. one who's a, who's yes. a dream it's so easy and this yeah. like, younger one's a bit more um challenging for different reasons and mm -hmm. It's weird. I suppose you just expect what you expect, what you know, don't you? It's so I, I true because you think a hundred percent genetic makeup is the same. You, you think you have the same parents, you've got the same environment. Why aren't you similar? Why can't you just, you know? But but no, it's another set of challenges. Yeah. So as, as you said, Jose, you know, with your two, just reacted completely differently. Yeah. It's fascinating, isn't it? Why why that might be. Um, it's maybe a bit soon for you, Gemma. I wonder about your yeah. two. <laughs> this is the one year old. Have you noticed any personality traits that are sort of wildly different to the older one, or is it a bit, bit soon? Um, they are they are different. The, the second one's definitely more mischievous. Um, and and talking to other parents that have had babies during lockdown, they also seem really mischievous. It's like they they've been locked up for so long, and now they're set free. They they're just into everything. Um, but yeah, it's, it's probably a little bit early for for certain to see how similar they are. They look the same. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I do wonder. Yeah, I mean, it's so interesting wanted to see those kind of if you like lockdown babies kind of grow up and and notice. And it'd be impossible to pull apart, won't it? Like, what's the reason for? It's always impossible to know people's personalities. Really, what's nature and what's nurture? And mm -hmm. and because you mentioned about that socialization bit, um, that you know we do generally on maternity leave, you socialize your baby, don't you? And you go to the the baby groups and all of that. And I wonder what impact, if any, that will have. Maybe it won't have an impact because they're so little. You know, that will just sort of iron itself out. Who knows? But yeah, I mean, talking of socializing with the because the kids have been online you know and that has been their social outlet my older one again talking about the different way they react has got this over covid has got this very strong friend group that is from different parts of the country and they're all going to a concert in manchester in december oh amazing and yeah yeah i mean one's from ireland one's from scotland it sounds like the start of a joke but they are sort of dotted around <laughs> in those places and they're they're, they're traveling and this is the first time toby he'll be nearly 16 then 
So I'm having to sort of pull back. But um, yeah, so they're all traveling to the same destination. They all love the same music. And like I say, that that developed out of COVID, that communal, um, you know, online community or, or friends. That's really interesting, isn't it? Because I think for a lot of us as well, in a way, while we've been locked down uh, and restricted, some things have opened up, haven't they? Mm. In terms of that online world and we've accessed things. Yes. I've accessed sort of workshops and uh, webinars and things that I wouldn't otherwise have been able to go to because of family responsibilities, actually, mostly, um, and just logistics. So it sort of broadened the world for us in some ways, hasn't it? And, and maybe that's been a good thing for children. Their lives are lived, uh, young people's lives live very much online anyway, aren't they, these days, yeah. let's be honest. So yeah. maybe that's where they've got their socialising and that's not so not such a bad thing. I don't think I, I think you're right when I think it's a very positive thing because I think it's actually made them see the world as everything's possible like like going here going there going everywhere whereas I think in my in my generation certainly you just didn't almost think to yourself oh I could just pop to America or or I could have a friend over here and go and see them you know I think it's made the world possible yeah we didn't make friends around the way I mean apart from maybe a French pen pile or something when we were kids we didn't really have that access did we so I didn't I I had a German pen pal exactly that was yeah 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 Yeah. it's interesting and um all that thing around travel and getting and getting out um Jose before we started you were saying about being able to go to Spain in the exactly. summer. We were, we were, you know, for the girls, it was like a, this, her social life, it was like a thousand times better than my social life. They were going to <laughs> sleepovers, birthday parties. I have to reschedule. I have, you know, because I need to be organized. I have all the, this is the party, this, this is the, you know, custom thing, this is the party for this, this is the party for that. It's, oh my gosh, I have like a thousand things. No, it's like the present. Like social, <laughs> incredible social life, better than my social life. And suddenly everything stops, you know what I mean? Everything stops and suddenly it's like, a, no, you cannot go. We have to explain them, you know, what is the pandemic? We have to be, you know, sit down over there. This is what we can do. We cannot, and we, because they, they didn't get it, you know, especially the little one. So we have to stop, sit down and explain, ask questions. And sometimes I have to say, I don't know. It's, it's like, I don't know, girls. I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know what is going to come out, but we're going to pull through. Don't worry about it, you know? We, we, you know. So it was kind of, you know, also the girls uh, using computers because they were using, the little one using the iPad all the time. And now we have to rationalize that because she's too much on the iPad. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, slow down, you know, because, uh, you know, I prefer to be doing outside something, you know, like, a, Martina, let's gonna play, do something, let's gonna walk now. But before in the pandemic, in the middle of it, she was like, a, it's not kind of like using the, the iPad, but it was a long time, you know, watching everything there and doing this, like, uh, so it was kind of that. And for my other one was really well, because it's like, a, that's what I telling you before, my little one can't fix anything in computers. <laughs> so we just joined the online courses uh, in Canada, in the US. So it was like an open window for her just to, you know, get more skills on the computers, get more things. And it was like, for care works really, really, really well. So it was like a kind of, as you said before, if you put in a balance, they react in a different way. And mm -hmm. they be reacting in a totally different way. Yeah. But it was, you know, I always like to get the positive, you know, from what happened, to put the positive on a plate and they say, okay, this is what we gain. Yeah. And I think it's, gosh, so important to do that, isn't it? One of the... Um, I think one of the positives for us, and Esther mentioned it, was like the, the government sanctioned walks, as you called it. We've always walked, my, my son and I have always gone for walks together, but we did it a lot more um, in lockdown while he was homeschooling and all of that. And I think, and I have continued to do it, and um, and they do complain, don't they? Like, you have to drag them out, like you say, as a drag them off the iPad or whatever it is. And, um, but once you're out, I don't know, I find that's where the best conversations happen with kids as well often, mm -hmm. when you're sort of, because um, if you just sat them down and said, right, talk to me, or even you do that thing where you think, how was your day at school? Fine, fine, or good. I had to get literally a one word answer. What did you do today? Maths. Oh, <laughs> you know, like, give me something. And um, on the walks, somehow maybe it's because it's like side by side and not face to face, um, or just that movement. I feel like you get more, I get more from my son when we're out and about, and uh, on long walks especially. So I think that's been a highlight for me, just like some of those chats that we've had. And um, what? How did you find with your with your eldest Gemma? Because she was what eight? Did you say your your eldest one is eight? Eight. 
that's that's a, an interesting age to have those conversations as well to to explain what's going on she must have had lots of questions She's still quite yeah. young but yeah yeah she um to be honest she adapted really well because um not that she was an only child but it was like she was an only child because she had no one home here to play with time, yeah. obviously the baby was taking up a lot of my time um but we did go out every day and you know she was the proud big sister so she was quite happy walking along pushing oh. the pram um you know and we made sure we did that every day um but she like all other children you know every day I made sure she she contacted her her friends and they had a, a couple of hours sometimes they weren't even talking to each other but they were playing a computer game together yeah. and you know doing it that way just for some social interaction but um she she seems to have adapted really well um she she obviously missed seeing her grandparents big time mm. um because because both me myself and my husband work full time she she spends a lot of time with her grandparents um so she she missed that sort of interaction um but yeah no she's she's been really she's been really good she has been really good oh brilliant yeah. i think their resilience is amazing isn't it children resilience just always floors me like what they can cope with although I did have a conversation with my son um in well it would have been coming up to April so maybe March this year on one of our walks I was walking him to his dad's because we're we're divorced we co-parent and uh he got into the habit of sometimes if I had time saying can we walk to dad's you know if the weather was good it's a couple of miles so it's a decent walk and then of course I have to walk back so it's a good walk for me then <laughs> he's just like bye mum and I think oh <laughs> I'm gonna walk home now on my own um, but they were always quite fruitful walks conversation wise and I said to him coming up to his birthday again this year which is April so it was like another lockdown birthday effectively there's a bit more we could do but I was planning a sort of outdoor get together with his friends a bit of a kick about in the park and stuff uh, and last year it was just basically all on sort of Skype or you know it was it was a bit of a non-starter just me and him in the house and a cake really and um so I was like, oh, you know, here's what you can do. And he was scared. He, it was the first and only time, really, I saw him show, like, some frustration and some kind of, oh, like, I've had enough now, you know. And he was sort of, and I said, you've coped so well. You've been amazing. And he said to me, absolutely flawed me, because he went, well, on the outside. And I thought, and I had that. I mean, he's a bit, he's a bit dramatic, to be fair. He's, he's a bit, <laughs> you know, and he's, he's good with the old words. He knows when to just give you a sort of word bullet <laughs> and I was like oh gosh I was sort of like really because you seem to be doing so great and he's like well yeah but it's not been easy mum like we it's it's been I really hate not being able to have a big party or spend more time with my friends and and because he has quite a small little group of friends at school you sort of think oh well he's still kept in touch with them like you say he's been on Skype every day not even speaking just sending each other little emojis and stuff who knows what they do and oh playing video games and that's all good but yeah it really struck me that I thought gosh I think I've sort of taken for granted how well he's done because he's got on with his schoolwork he's sort of you know he seemed quite happy and jolly I felt like I'd had more wobbles than him certainly in the first lockdown I was a bit a bit highly strung and he was kind of seemed really resilient and he went you know on the outside mum and I thought oh gosh, have I missed something there? Have I not been quite as attentive? Um, yeah, and, it, and I was really glad then that we'd had that and we'd have a bit of a chat about it. But yeah, I wonder how much they kind of do keep... Because kids try and look after us as well, don't they, a little bit? Definitely. I think yes. you're so right. It's, and, and talking of word bullets, my, my 11-year-old said to me the other day about secondary, because I was like, you know, everything, how's everything going? It seems to be... And that's the thing as well when they've struggled with their transition is not to make too much of a, a big deal, but just to sort of, oh, so is it going okay? You seem to be enjoying it. And then he said, year seven is very violent, mum. I've had to become, oh my to look after myself. And I was like, God, it's like sending him to war. Yeah, well, <laughs> I know. What, what's going on? I know, I know. So I was like trying not to act, react incredibly. <laughs> oh my God, you know. I said, oh, so why why is it violent? Yeah, he said, yeah. he said um, being a boy, at year seven in Sadri, he said, I'm always having to fight, you know. And then he told me about these little, little, but he's yeah. very dramatic. He's yeah. very dramatic as well. And he knows when, to, like you say, you know, but it was just one of those, you know, words. And I was like, ooh, 
you know. very violent. I'm like, very I'm violent. Like, oh, in September. That's making me really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But I think for a boy, and um, he's he's quite contradictorily, he's he's a rugby player and he's big and he's into muscle weightlifting and keeping fit and and that's a lot of what we do together and and that's part of what I love as well and and um so he can he could totally look after himself you know and I say that advisedly because I never sort of say to him we'll punch them or anything like that but um and I think that's why he might get approached a couple of times you know by other boys I think that happens sometimes doesn't it the big kids the bigger stronger kids do get exert them you know and it's all it's all them testing it's all testing but I think for a boy at secondary the years I mean you'll know better Jose going to that next thing other boys test them physically and yeah that's the same it's like the strongest, strongest man, who is the one that is the coolest yes. one who is the... so yeah. in my case I have my uh, oldest one that is going also to the secondary and we change schools so which is a kind of a big step in her life because yeah. now she's in a girls school and now he's going to a girls and a boys school. Right. So, and we did everything in the middle of the pandemic. So it's kind of a big change for her. And, and to tell you the truth, he's, she's looking forward for that because the other one was more academic, more like, a, you know, by the book and everything. And this new school have like a big studio, music studio when she's onto the music. She loves music and computers. And you can see all those instruments with all the computers. With all, you see that places and say, oh my God, for me, Chinese. But for that, it's like, <laughs> daddy, look at this. So she's really looking forward for the big change, which is going to be a big one. But at least it's like, Daddy, uh, yesterday they sent like a cup holder or something, like a, a new bag, a new things. Because now with the pandemic, everything is sent by mail post or anything. And they have like a video chat like us. It's not presentially on the, on the new school. So it's like, Daddy, look at this. They sent me this. They, you know. So she's looking forward to start. It's like, Daddy, we're starting the 7th of September. Please, let's. So it's a big change, but I think... For my oldest one, it was uh, like a good change. So he's gonna, you know. Yeah. So it's ready. Yeah. So let's see. Fingers crossed. Let's see. It's done well, and see is doing well. And. But what about the boys? What about she's gonna be mixing with boys for the first time? Mm. Wow. Well, uh, what twelve-year-old boys are like? Is there one knocking on my door? No, I come in to collect your daughter, and they're like. They're like... <laughs> <What? laughs> they're gonna be oh my gosh, you know. I don't know. It's gonna happen at some point. It's gonna happen. You know what I mean? Happen. Yeah, but I always imagine, I was telling my dad, he's like, it's going to be someone with, a, you know, something like this, you know, the trousers down or something like, hey, what am I going to, it's like, oh my gosh, what are you going to do? What are you going to say? <laughs> it's going to be a new, a new experience for me too, you know? Oh my. Yeah, it was to it. My son spent quite a lot of last night upstairs on his phone and apparently like FaceTiming a girl from school. And I was like, is she? He was chatting to me and I went, hang on, who was that I can hear? Are you on a video call? And he's like, yeah. And I was just going, oh, okay. <laughs> this is happening now, is it? With, okay, like, right. <laughs> so I'm used to girls all the time because it's a girls' school. I'm going with the girls, these uh, girls go to Madonna's. Uh, and now it's going to be girls and boys, which is like, I don't know what to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, let's see. We go with the flow. So let's see. Yeah, it'll soon become just the norm, though, won't it? It'll be fine, mm. I'm sure. But yeah, lots of change. It's... Yep. Um, I guess what we've learned is that our kids are pretty, you know, they're good. They can do change, can't they? And I think they are broadly resilient. But I wonder in terms of um, looking out for things in the future, like how are we going to, I wonder what the long-term effects are going to be on all of our kids from babies to teenagers who've, who've lived through this time. Any thoughts from any of you about like, what do you think in 10 years from now, what do you think we'll look back and say was the, was the impact on our kids? I mean, that's a big question. Oh. I'm not going to go to an individual I want to risk you all shouting over each other but I mean I think from the point of, of you know having a baby in lockdown I think because they are so young and and things are getting back to normal I think um or would like to think that they haven't hugely been impacted on um the restrictions that have been in place um you know that because things are getting back to normal and they're still fairly young yeah. they'll just adapt to things and you know they they won't remember any of it anyway kind of thing True. yeah i do with that in a way because for the five year old for me i don't think i don't i don't even know if uh, 10 years from now she will remember anything about this this uh, lockdown 
And for the oldest one, the 11 years, she will know, she will remember. I know that she will remember. Remember that when we were doing this, or when we, especially the dog. I think the dog, it was the, you know, the landmark. It's the dog was coming home, you know? And it was, and we had the dog in the pandemic. So I think they will remember when we have the dog and everything, but the little one, I don't think she will remember anything, but for the old one, yes, I think she's having also tough times, you know, like uh, adjusting and think, because also she, she was able to, to watch all her friends, you know, through the window in the street, because I live in a cul-de-sac, yeah. playing sometimes, and she was not allowed to go out, you know, and it was like, but daddy, they are there. And it, so again, we had to sit down, talk to her, explain again the things that we can do, we cannot, and it's like, but at the end, it was here, you know what I mean? It was like, a, but daddy, I want to be there, you know, and I know there, you know, at the end of the day, you know, no matter what you tell me, you know, but so it was like a tough times at some point, it was, so she will remember a few things. Hopefully, I don't think that is going to be like a, uh, any damage or anything like a huge thing, mm. but she will remember at some point, I know. Yeah, I think so. And it will be interesting when the adults themselves won't take talking to their own kids. At, at one point, my son started doing a diary in mm. lockdown, a sort of lockdown diary, and he did it in the form of like a letter to his future grandchildren. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was really funny, but it was, I mean, it was high drama. It was very like, oh, you'll never know how difficult it was in 2020 in lockdown, like such a dreadful time. And I was like, you are basically sitting on your PlayStation in your pants most of the time. So it's probably <laughs> not that bad. And he's like laughing going, no, but I want to really make it so my future grandchildren can understand like what we went through. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so as I say, maybe under the surface, it was trickier than I gave him credit for, but he did write about that, which was another interesting thing that we've got like, for posterity to look back on, which is quite fun. Um, and some of it was really lovely as well. Some of the things he wrote were really lovely, but some, yeah, it, what interested me is the bits that affected him or they found difficult were maybe not the things that I found difficult. So like children's perspective is different, isn't it? And sort of not being able to play out and not being able to, whereas we're maybe thinking our concerns are other uh, otherwise engaged perhaps but uh, yeah what about um, what about you Esther what do you think about be the long-term effects any thoughts yeah. I, I think there will definitely I mean it's age it's as you say it's what age they're at and what they will remember I think my two definitely will remember it um, but I think majoritively positively although there'll be there are definitely scars my mum died over this period of time in January and she contracted Covid she didn't die due to COVID, she died um, due to cancer, but she did contract COVID while in hospital. So to the boys, that was a big, big thing. Old Gran's got COVID yeah. and it made it very real. Um, so I think that's definitely a scar, a permanent scar. Uh, but I think because of all the bonding and because of all the talking and, and working through things, I think, I hope it will be positive. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's, it's a it's a shared memory I think almost I, I can't say this obviously but almost like going through a war situation is sometimes it has felt like that it's felt like we've what I shouldn't say that but it feels like we may be, be winning yeah I think that's a really good analogy I think it's true that we and maybe that's the key isn't it and what I think what we've all talked about is that we've kind of gone through it with our kids mm -hmm. we haven't you know we've tried to have those open conversations we've tried to support each other and and we've all gone through it together and maybe that is the bonding bit that's mm. going to sort of um make our relationships with them stronger i hope yeah um because yeah, we've got that shared experience so yeah like going through mm. something so unprecedented and, and so difficult yeah mm. when the first lockdown announcement was made back in march 2020 i cried watching i mean i never thought i'd cry watching boris johnson on the telly but um i, I actually cried i just felt that you felt you felt that sort of sense of the gravity of the whole thing yes i was quite aware it was coming but i found myself crying and my son ended up sort of comforting me and being it'll be okay mum and i was like oh i don't know why i'm crying it's fine yeah. but it's that unknown isn't it and then you're sort of venturing exactly. into this unknown world together and I think you, you lot well, it's all sort of had a Churchillian um, essence to it, though, didn't it? That we were going into something together and we were going to fight it together. And, you know, we were trying to have that faith that we'll come out the other end. Yeah, there were some really emotional moments, weren't there? Mm. And a lot of uncertainty and a lot of feeling like, oh, gosh, where are we going to finish up through all this? Mm. And, um, mm -hmm. and obviously some losses as well along the way for some of yeah. us. So, yeah, I think... It will have changed as all I expect, but it'll be interesting to see how the young people 
sort of grow and come out of it. But hopefully they've learned some good strengths as well through the experience. Oh, thanks everybody. I think it's a very good time to wrap it up because we're we're almost up to time and I'm really mindful I still let you get away. But um, thanks so much for, for joining in today and for chatting. And uh, it's been really interesting. I thought it would be <laughs> with you guys. Um, I must say to anybody watching as well, if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and come and watch more Chrysalis on the Couch episodes where we talk about all sorts of topics, um, sort of from, from all sorts of um, themes and stories under the sun uh, and lots of contributions from students and staff and tutors. So come and get to know us a bit more and watch some more. Um, chrysalis on the couch but for now i'll say um bye for now and thanks all of you so much for taking part again and uh it was great to see you i'll maybe see you again take care bye bye for now <laughs>